Hey everyone, I'm Prez. Welcome back to Cabrillo. If you're new, this is episode three, and today we're going to be building the central business district for Cabrillo, which is my city set in Northern California, where we talk about urbanism, have a good time, and um, try to make a cool fictional city. So starting off here, I mean, we're, we're looking at the peninsula where downtown's gonna sit, and we're gonna be crafting the outline of downtown in this episode. Don't expect it to be fully done. I just wanna get a feel for you know, where stuff's gonna go in the city. First in Inspiration Station here, we're going to take a look at Sacramento, um, which has a skyline that's a little smaller, but about the scale of the skyline that I want to go for in my downtown, so I definitely used it as a basis here. But also San Francisco. San Francisco's skyline is a little bit big for me, just considering the, the scale of my peninsula, but I wanted a big modern skyscraper like Salesforce Tower, which is the tallest one you saw there. Uh, we're also going to head across the bay to Oakland's. Oakland's skyline is kind of meh to me, um, or at least the buildings of it, um, but... I, I do like the scale of it, and it's you know in a region that's relevant to me. So I did did want to take a look over in Oakland, but also of course Portland's Portland skyline is you know uh, I mean I, the buildings are fine. It's really just the backdrop of the um, the green hillside uh, to the right over there that uh, really stands out to me. And I'm gonna build a skyline that's probably a little bit larger than Portland's, or at least the taller buildings are. Um, and you see me place this enormous building at first here. I'm going to remove that. It ended up being way too big, mostly just because I can't really expand the downtown much um, beyond that hillside, because that hillside at the top of the screen there is actually going to be a nature reserve right next to downtown. I want to really exaggerate the, um, you know, the, the green belt in the city, which is, you know, just the fact that the city's just got tons of outdoor recreational opportunities and tons of land has been preserved. Um, and, you know, even right near the, the, um, the center of the city but also you know towards the outskirts there isn't going to be too much sprawl here so um i, I want to communicate that by making sure there's really quality open space right in downtown so this avenue here is the widest road in downtown um so it's basically it's you know it's got bus lanes on it and we're gonna make the bus lanes look more realistic and add turning lanes to them in, in a little bit but uh, towards the end of the video but uh, the the rest of the the road um, as it as it heads uh, north will actually turn into a light rail um, line and you know I showed you what that looked like in the last episode but you'll see a little more later what that transition looks like you can kind of see it to the top there uh, but this avenue one thing I wanted to make sure I did is um, me I wanted to make sure that the building heights along this main avenue here uh, were were reasonably tall. As in, the buildings right next to the avenue, wherever there are buildings, are wide enough so they're at least as tall as the avenue is wide. Because it, you know, grounds you on the avenue and makes you feel like you're well-contained in a good ratio. Um, and that's why sometimes you might feel claustrophobic in a uh, in a city that's got, in, you know, say you're in Times Square, it's crazy, the scale's totally off. But also, being in a suburb where the... Um, where the buildings are really, really set back and short, also doesn't feel quite contained. There, there's a certain ratio that you can meet, um, and there, you know, there are arguments over what that exactly is. But I wanted to make sure that, and, and this is a little bit, you know, even further than the ratio needs to be. Like some of these buildings that I'm placing along the the side there are um, are actually taller than the the avenue. But and then obviously we've got skyscrapers that are way taller than the avenue. But uh, for the most part, I, I just I don't want any buildings that are so short that the avenue makes it feel like you're in a suburb. That was just my goal there. But yeah, so you see I removed that big skyscraper. I'm also going to remove some of those New York sky skyscrapers that I placed that are, are on the kind of top left. Um, just the older ones, uh, the white ones. It They look really good, but it, it's not really feasible to have so many older skyscrapers um, from you know so long ago that are so tall. And... Jay had a, a rule that he mentions to me, actually. Let me actually see what this was. Again, it was uh, from Interurban Era, uh, which was uh, to not, um, be, not, not build the first, last, biggest, or smallest place or thing in your city, uh, just for anything fictional, just because it makes it a lot more plausible. Like, you can have anything in between, but none of those. And I just wanted to try to make sure that I stuck to that. Let me know if I stick to that. Because once again, I'm going to remove some of those older, taller buildings on the on the left there. But we do have one taller building with a tower kind of in downtown. We're also going to have a, 
cool little square in downtown that I think you're going to like. Lots of different features. This episode might feel a little disjointed. I feel like I'm disjointed right now just talking to you, but um, it's it's just because planning out a skyline is never never simple, and I'm not I'm not even sure where individual districts are going to go. Right now, I'm kind of building a little entertainment district. I'm not going to build the district in this episode. I'm just placing buildings where I think they might go, and we're going to change them a lot in the future. They're just a couple little areas that I I wanted to draw attention to is possible places to to build distinct districts and this is one of them which is going to be you know entertainment um but but yeah we're also going to have a chinatown for sure because this is the west coast and we're also going to have a, a little italy which is not conventional for a west coast ethnic enclave but um it, it's maybe something we can add on to this city as as a feature in, in the city's history because there are some awesome little Italy uh, assets by Gilded Age that I do want to use. So we're going to try to you know, make one district uh, kind of fit that that ethnic enclave status, um, or well, two of them because we've little, little, little Italy and Chinatown. We might also have Born of the Future that are smaller, but those are the two main ones that I do want to implement. And I want to make sure that I'm not duplicating Columbia City's Chinatown too much. I want to make this city have its own unique Chinatown, but just like Columbia City and Aramore, this is set in the, um, you know, kind of Pacific Northwest, well, Northern California, Pacific Northwest area. So it's, it's, uh, it's definitely realistic to have a pretty sizable Chinatown. We'll play in where that is at a future episode though. Yeah, going back and listening to that time lapse, I sound terrible right now. Sorry about that. I've got a, I, don't know, I think allergies or something. It's my throat's a little swollen like i don't have covid i tested negative but it's probably allergies allergies are weird this year whatever it is i sound a little off this episode but uh i i should be fine it's not too bad do also let me know if you're enjoying so far a like would be appreciated if you are signals that you are enjoying without needing to leave a comment if you're lazy um or just leave a comment and just let me know what you're thinking of the new video style because i've changed it up a little bit uh, I really like it. It's really simple for me to do, but also feels it feels um, like I can like really what matters to me isn't necessarily the it, the top tier quality, like having Google Earth Studio footage that takes me a long time to record. Um, like I'm fine with having just normal Google Earth footage in the beginning of the video and Inspiration Station if it communicates the same amount or in my opinion, I think it communicates more information the way I'm able to move my camera around a little bit more freely. Stuff like that. I'm just I'm trying to communicate information and tell a story in, in my videos and I really would appreciate some feedback on you know how I'm doing that and also if I could do that better. It's also it's a little weird trying to communicate um, stories like this in you know in my videos just because it's like it's not like I'm editing this city over time or building it throughout history like I'm trying to I'm building one piece at a time and buildings from different eras um, one idea I had for a future series would be to do a se like a season two of a previous series um, where I go back and do redevelopments based on comments and um, you know build new transit lines stuff like that um, over a timeline that we agree on and I think that would actually be a really interesting idea I don't know when I do that or what city I do that for but uh, I, I really think that could be cool because it gives you the opportunity to really immerse yourself in the city without feeling like you're building over a, a period of time that you know, or well, at one point in time, rather, you could build it a period of time if you do that, if you work with an existing city and make a series based off of that. It's just an idea I had, um, but regardless, I do want to make sure that I can still tell stories about uh, Cabrillo's history and about um, you know, just West Coast cities in general and urbanism and all of these things while I'm making these videos. The goal of this is to be a city skyline series that anybody can watch and enjoy me, you know, building the city, but also communicate you know, stuff on urbanism, on on anything like that. So I would really appreciate not only feedback, but maybe suggestions on how you'd like me to do that. Um, maybe how you'd like me to conduct polls, various stuff like that. Um, I'll stop talking now, but just let me know in the comments if you have any ideas. Anyway, uh, we are continuing here to work on the downtown. I'm also tr I'm trying to figure out exactly what types of roads there should be and i noticed I, I should listen i should have done this earlier i should have planned out where all the bike paths would be um because i forgot that the um the the class roads with bike paths the u.s roads they are wider than the normal u.s roads so it made it a little bit hard to plan out after the fact, because I'd already placed buildings down, and that was my bad, so I'd recommend planning that kind of thing out in advance. Um, but I'm trying to do that as much as I can for these 
um, next districts here. I'm also adding back a couple of one ways where it makes sense like along the highway here. Although once again, we are not going to have too many one ways within the city. I'm also adding uh, some roads that have bus lanes that might not be part of a coherent bus lane network. Um, like not a full BRT line, just areas that have had bus lanes painted red, which will end up being shared by bike lanes, by the way. But yeah, anyway, uh, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just kind of upgrading these. None of it's final, but I'm trying to get closer to having a cohesive bike network, but also making sure to note that um, the bike, ne bike network's not going to be perfect. It's like the city's working with old infrastructure here, piecing together a bike network, um, their politics involved. So it might not connect perfectly, but that's realistic and you have to be okay with that. Anyway, I'm working on uh, the plaza here, the, the square in downtown. And I'd really love some names for this and a story behind it because it's kind of like Pioneer Square in Portland in terms of being a gathering place for the city. It's the center point of the city. There's probably going to be a park across the street. It's got a little green space, like a almost like a you know, urban pocket park of some sort, but uh, on a whole block across the street on the left there. But yeah, I'd really love some uh, some stories for this. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas for. Um, how this park came into being, you know, how all these buildings were planned around it. At least part of it, I think, is the buildings that are around the plaza there should be city buildings and federal buildings. Um, like, it's a center of government as well as um, culture in the city. Um, but the rest of these buildings around here kind of bring me into a different discussion. You know, these are office buildings, like most of these. Uh, we're going to place a lot more residential towers in the future, um, and a lot of them are also going to be outside of the city center. We're going to have some industrial areas that are getting new residential developments um, in the future, but a lot of these buildings are office buildings, which were built in the city for, you know, commuters you know, a long time ago. Um, although there aren't tons of them because a lot of that development also happened outside of the city center in the 70s and 80s when offices were being built in the suburbs instead of the central city. So if there aren't, you know, a ton of office buildings in downtown, that's why um, there's going to be some sort of research park outside of the city that is like a tech hub of some sort uh, that we're going to build in the future probably around a university, maybe talking about the dynamics that kind of shaped Silicon Valley as well. But um, for now, like this central business district here in downtown is shaped by the fact that a lot of development occurred outside of downtown. And these office buildings here are only part of the story. There's also going to be a lot more office development elsewhere. Um, and suburban commuters commuting from suburb to suburb rather than from suburb into the central city um, really shaped that. And some you know, people wanting workplaces closer to home uh, shaped that. Lower land costs shaped that. But yeah, I mean, that's why I'm not placing too many office buildings here. They're probably under 20 large office buildings, if not fewer. Um, and obviously, a lot of the, uh, the smaller buildings will also have offices in the upper floors um, in our fictional world here. But, um, you know, in general, the this is... This is uh, like downtown Cabrillo is a center of residence as much as it is a center of business. Um, and it's a center of culture as much as it is a center of business because um, the, the business is concentrated not only here, but elsewhere in the metropolitan area, which is something that you have to consider for sure. And I definitely want to make sure this isn't a completely polycentric metropolis, which basically means a city that has a couple different centers. Like you can think of LA like that. Like there is downtown LA, but Santa Monica, Century City, places like that, and Glendale also represent other, you know, uh, points in the city that are um, make it a polycentric metropolis, like many centers. Um, this is not that, but I am saying that it does have some um, office development in downtown or in the suburbs as well as in downtown. Um, so it's an interesting place, and it's you know, it's not copying um, the dynamics of San Francisco on a smaller scale, although it kind of does resemble that because San Francisco's got a strong. Um, central business district that has been expanding and has office buildings, but it also obviously has Silicon Valley with lots of jobs at the edge of the metropolitan area, um, which I mean, I mean, I definitely want to communicate here, and that's something you'll you'll notice. Um, if you have any other stories for Cabrillo's history, definitely let me know in the comments. But you know, in short, it's it's not trying to replicate San Francisco's you know metro area dynamics, but it is going to have a lot of those factors shape it as well, um, and that's. 
kind of where I'm coming from with this downtown, and once again, why there are why isn't why it isn't just covered in office buildings, because um, a lot of that development once again happens when office buildings were also being built in the suburbs. Um, that's uh, that was a, a little bit of a marathon there. Um, that's a little bit about what I'm thinking for the central business district here and central business districts elsewhere kind of have similar dynamics, although each one's different. Um, there's a lot to learn about, you know, central business districts um, throughout the country. LA's CBD history is really interesting um, and there's a lot of politics involved with it. And I'd, if you're interested actually in learning about LA's specifically, I'd recommend reading some Mike Davis, um, really awesome author on that. Anyway, moving on here, I wanted to announce the results of the votes last episode. So first of all, Mount Oso won uh, for the mountain here in the city over Mount Columbia uh, with 59% of the vote, um, which I'm happy about. I liked this name a lot more, too, because it uh, kind of moved us on from Columbia City. Secondly, um, we are going to be building a dismantled freeway across from the city. This is going to be a site of a previous freeway that's kind of been turned into something like the High Line, probably. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to pull it off. Let me know if you have any suggestions for that. Um, at least part of it will kind of work like the High Line in New York City. It'll be elevated. It'll be really cool. For the vote for this episode, make sure to check out the link in the description um, and vote on whether we should have any buildings like restaurants or hotels along the waterfront with the proviso that any buildings that would be there would allow um, the public to access the paths on their premises to make sure that public space is preserved in the city. Should it just be green space or should there also be restaurants and hotels and stuff like that that aren't very invasive but still are on the waterfront? So make sure to cast your vote at the link in the description. Um, I might also have a pinned comment for it. And uh, make your voice heard. Even if you don't comment in the video, I'd love to hear what you think about that um, that build. So this I present to you is Cabrillo's downtown. Um, I really like it. I love the buildings I chose for the skyline. I think it's a good balance of office and residential. Although you basically see no residential towers here. There are going to be tons more in the future. That's the one thing I didn't place much of. I also didn't place, you know, specific districts, um, their locations. So suggest locations maybe for individual districts, um, or maybe I'll choose those myself, and we'll kind of build them one by one and give them their own feel, give them their own history. I'd love to hear some suggestions in the comments for how that should go, some stories, because I I would love to love to hear what you think. I'm trying to integrate like to integrate participation as much as possible in this series. I know it's not perfectly realistic, like we're not having city council votes on what to build um, in a perfectly realistic fashion or anything, but um, I'm doing my best. And if you have any more suggestions for how I can increase that, um, please let me know in the comments because I'd be totally open to more suggestions. Regardless, um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. That'd be great. Join us on Discord. Post your own screenshots there. Just engage with the community. It's a really awesome community over on my Discord server. We'd love to have you. Uh, follow me on Twitter for urbanism content. Uh, if you want to download the save game, head over to Patreon. Um, if you want other benefits, you can you know, head over to my Patreon or become a member here on YouTube. Uh, both are in the description. And you know, quick shout out to some patrons here. Dental Wright, Antoine Robert, Rodney Green, Bradley Stanton, Fluffy the Cat, and Oliver G Oliver Gansberg, thank you all so much. A lot of you are new, so welcome. Anyway, I'll see you next time for the next episode of Cabrillo. I have no idea what it's going to be, but it's, it's going to be good.